Meanwhile, we will again for the next speaker. Uh, does the floor have any questions? So we know that there are three ways of treating uh, or, or having handball in Ireland. Three ways. Three ways. So then I have the privilege of uh, introducing the next speaker. Uh, Athel Thompson is one of our three podiatrists together with Craig Tanner and uh, Ken Van Alsenoy. And he's going to talk about the shoe surface interface and handball. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, it's a real pleasure to be here. And just quickly to start with, for those of you who uh, may not have podiatrists in your, your country or your sports medicine setup. Um, podiatrists predominantly deal with uh, lower limb injuries um, and uh, particularly the biomechanics of lower limb injuries of the, of the foot and ankle uh, or how the athlete's footwear may interact with the playing surface. Um, I'm obviously an Australian and I married a girl from Ireland and these are not big handball playing nations as Chris has mentioned. Um, but since moving to Aspatow I've had the opportunity to work with um, with uh, international handball players, and I must say it's, it's been a fantastic opportunity. I've really in, enjoyed working with these players, and I'm completely carried away with the excitement of the, of the World Championships, actually, uh, and Qatar doing so well. Um, and this has sparked some interest in some ongoing research that we're looking at between the, the athlete's shoe and, and the playing, and, and the characteristics of the playing surface. Now, I want this to be a little starter on the subject and quite light, really. It's a late afternoon for you. Um, so we're going to keep it light on physics and the mathematics because it can get quite complex and, uh, and I really want to encourage a little bit of uh, conversation along the way. So we'll start with a video and we're going to have a little look at some other sports. So we'll start with this video from football and you can tell me maybe why this happened or what you think has happened. So apologies, we meant to have the sound connected, but um, I could hear it perfectly, if that's any consolation. Um, anyone want to say what's happened or why? New shoes. New shoes? No. Uh, it would be great if I knew the absolute uh, story behind this, but basically, as a Liverpool fan, uh, my heart got broken is what happened. But um, Steve, this, was, this, caused, this had a lot of implications um, on a season where Liverpool could have won or lost the Premier League over what was effectively a slip on the surface. And so when, what we're talking about here is uh, when an athlete slips, the, the, the friction between the shoe and the surface, I'm just gonna grab a shoe. A huge handball shoe I have here. Um, the friction between the shoe and the surface um, has to be quite high so that athlete doesn't slip. So, so if, if we have a relationship here where the friction is quite low, then the athlete can fall over and, and these sorts of things can happen. Um, so what is friction? Friction really is a, a, the force that resists the motion between two surfaces that are in sliding contact. Um, in this case, it was very low and we had a performance issue. He, didn't, he, he slipped over and couldn't get to the ball. But we didn't have an injury issue. So we'll, we'll go on to discuss um, how this might relate to injury also. So what we have here is a, is a gentleman trying to run an agility course on, that is covered in banana skins. Um, and we know that banana skins are the slipperiest compound known to man. This is actually a Mythbusters episode um, looking, at the, looking at the friction between the shoe and the surface. Um, and what we see here is, is this relationship or between that, sh that shoe and surface is again very, very low. So as the athlete pushes on the surface and tries to um, create force, uh, the surface kind of moves underneath him and, and you can't generate the, the needed friction or force. So this is an example where friction between that shoe and surface is very low uh, and the athlete slips. But we need to consider what may happen if the friction is very high and the foot gets trapped on that surface. So at the moment we've seen a slip in a fairly straight line which is known as translational friction but there is also rotational friction and the issue being that if the shoe, if friction is very high and the shoe is caught on that surface, we may transfer force or torque to proximal structures. 
Okay, so what is a shoe surface interface? An interface is a fancy word for a, a, a boundary or a connection between, between two, uh, two bodies, or in this case, um, the athlete, the athlete's shoe, and, and the surface, okay? When the athlete pushes on that surface, we get uh, ground reaction force, and we get that in both a vertical direction and a horizontal direction. And we know in handball that there's really large forces, especially in this horizontal direction when they change direction and start and stop. And we also know there's really large vertical forces when they uh, do these amazing jumps and things. Generally, the surface side of the interface has two different types. There's a wooden surface. This is from Qatar at Al Rayyan Club. There's only two of these left throughout Qatar, as far as I'm aware. If anyone wants to correct me, that's okay. And then we have the artificial surface. Um, this is from the World Championships here in Qatar. All three venues have this artificial surface. This is Iceland versus Algeria. Um, all three venues have this on the, on the main playing arena. And they also have this exact surface on two practice areas at each, in each of the three venues. So out of interest, this is from the Lisale um, Stadium. They have some wooden floor underneath. Uh, cross-section of the artificial surface, uh, various layers, and then on top we have this sort of etched, I'm not sure how well it's coming through, but kind of pattern on top of the polyurethane surface um, to produce friction so the shoe can grip on this. So that's the surface. The other side of the interface is the footwear. So when athletes go to a surface, they know that most of that surface is hopefully fairly uniform and less there's been some sweat on the floor, some hand resin or something to change the characteristics. But athletes themselves can choose their shoes, and many do for very many varied things. We get athletes that choose them for colour, athletes that choose them uh, for all sorts of reasons, they have sponsors, and the, the characteristics on the outsole of the shoe can be very slippery or very grippy, and we need to match these up or align these with the surface. Okay, so why is this all important in handball and, and why am I talking about it in an ankle session? Um, this, we know from this excellent work here that the ankle's uh, involved very often in elite, uh, both male and female handball, along with the knee. And there is a theory, as I suggested, that um, when friction between the shoe and the surface is very high, we stand a risk of that shoe being trapped on the surface whilst the, the leg or the proximal structures rotate above it or translate over it. And here's an example of that from the first minute of the World Championship. So if we look up here, unfortunately about 40 seconds into the first match uh, after the opening ceremony, this player has um, landed on, on the surface and sustained what seems to be a reasonably nasty ankle injury. And uh, whilst I'm not standing here trying to say the only reason that these injuries happen has to do with uh, friction at the shoe surface interface, there's obviously a lot of other uh, key risk factors that are possibly not modifiable. I think it warrants attention that we may be able to modify or modulate how, how much grip there is between the shoe and surface. And it's also important to know that uh, there, is, there is a level of uh, friction um, at which no further gains in performance are made, so the athlete can push off and perform how they like, but the risk of, uh, of injury increases. Okay. So, I just want to insert a video um, that I took on my iPhone last year at the tennis, just to show, and this is not going to work because the sound's not playing. Basically, this was to illustrate that it's very difficult to see these forces, especially in real time, or this relationship that happens between the shoe and the surface. But I managed to pick up the, the noises that were at play from this video, um, which I'm only going to be able to hear, so we'll, we'll, we'll go on. Yeah, apologies for that. Can I reproduce it with my shoes? Yeah. Um, Okay, so we can hear them, and we would have heard them in that video, but can we measure them? Okay, so we can measure them with some um, fairly sophisticated devices, like this used at Penn State University. This is called Penn Foot. 
And what we have here is a fairly sophisticated device with strain gauges and, um, and all sorts of computers that can measure how much force it takes to drag this foot along the surface in a straight line, and also how much force it takes to load the foot and rotate it in the surface. Um, so it really measures the traction between the shoe and the surface. And very clever, we can insert the athlete's actual shoe on the actual playing surface. So we can go to the, to the area where they play and we can use the athlete's shoe and then follow them up to see who gets injured and who doesn't. So you can go from as sophisticated as this down to um, something made of scrap materials in Aspatara as a, as a prototype for the handball, where we got a, a handball shoe, some weight and a torque wrench. And we basically twisted this torque wrench to see how much force it would take to overcome the friction between the shoe and the surface. And we, vi we visited all the Handball World Championship sites to measure this friction. Okay. So to put some numbers on that, which correlates with another study from pre previously, um, if you were to do a 180 degree pivot on a wooden floor and you had some socks on, it would take about three Newton meters without torque wrench. If you did that with a, a standard sort of handball shoe, it would be somewhere around 13. If you then switch surface onto an artificial floor with the same shoe, it can go up to 33 Newton meters. So this is really just to show that even though we've kept the shoe similar, if we change the surface, there can be a large change. Or if we keep the surface similar but change the shoe, there can be a large change. Okay. Another point is that it's really important for the athletes to have a uniform surface. And, and Ben O'Neill did some wonderful work with this. Um, if there's changes uh, in, the, in the surface, the athlete can, can have some issues, as we'll see here again in football. So what happens here is um, he's playing on a natural grass surface for Liverpool again, and steps onto an artificial surface he's not expecting, which has higher friction, and he rolls his ankle. Okay, so this prompted a review that my colleagues and I have done, and it's in review at the moment. Um, in which we've looked at uh, measuring the forces at, this, at the shoe surface and seeing how these might correlate with injury in field-based sports. And what, we've, what these studies did, there's over 5,000 participants, is they measured how much, uh, they got an actual object objective measurement of the force required for the shoe to turn on the surface, and then over a three-year period, prospectively follow up who got injured and who didn't. And what we found was that when you pool this data, you're over two and a half times more likely to sustain a lower limb injury, and uh, predominantly these were knee and ankle injuries, if the friction between the shoe and the surface is, is very high. So that's what we're expecting. Okay, so away from field sports and back to court sports. Um, this is a nice study by Parson in, in British Journal of Sports Medicine looking at finished floorball, which I must admit I haven't had a lot of experience with. Um, but they did find a difference between the artificial floor and the wood floor which they attributed to the higher friction between the shoe and the surface, the artificial floor had higher uh, traction or friction characteristics than the wood. And they found a particular difference um, with non-contact injuries. It's quite alarming. So finally, on to handball. Uh, and this is a study by Ulsen, uh, Gretti Mikkelboost, and um, Roald Barr, who was here. And they did an excellent study in which they measured the friction between wooden floor and artificial floor and looked at ACL injuries, so slightly away from ankles, but um, I think there's still something to gain out of this. And they found, as, especially the females on this floor, if the friction was high, there was a higher rate of ACL injury. Okay, so where does that leave us? Um, in the future, we really hope to be able to develop um, portable machines that we can take to venues and make this measurement or this value of friction available to the players so that they may be able to um, self-select the shoes that best suit that surface. So, if we have a surface that is very high friction and we've measured this and supplied the measurement, then they should use a shoe that is, quite, that is less grippy or more slippery. And the opposite, so if the surface is very slippery, then we'd like them to wear a high traction shoe in an attempt to find this nice optimal zone of friction so they can get the performance they're looking for and not affect playability within the game, but also not have their risk of injury increased. Okay. So really the key is to have as low rotational friction as possible um, while having high translational friction, which means a straight line performance is not, is, uh, not affected. 
Cleaning and maintenance uh, can, to keep conditions uniform seems particularly important, especially with handball. You can see a player hit the floor um, with sweat all over them, and that might not get cleaned until the break of play. And the friction between uh, moisture affects this, this uh, artificial surface, and the friction between a, a dry section and that, that wet section is really quite different. And also the use of um, resin on the hands can make the court, uh, the traction a lot higher, and we'd like to follow up on this in the future. Um, it would be very important to, to have the handball player's actual shoes or the ones commonly used on the actual playing surface so we can refer about, uh, data back to these players. So the real take home message from uh, the, the literature that we've looked over and our systematic review is that if rotational traction especially is high at the shoe surface interface then the risk of ankle and knee injury is, is increased with large effect size. Thank you very much. Thank you Atul. Are there any questions? Interesting to see that uh, artificial turfs and handball generate also controversies <laughs> like in football. Yeah. Yeah. I do have a question, if possible. Um, we were talking about uh, surface between shoe and uh, the surface, the, the friction between the shoe and the surface. But uh, many of these handball players, they're really very physical, big guys who have this uh, functional flat feet. Mm -hmm. Many of them use the, the inlay soles. Do we consider the friction between the inlay and the shoe also? Is that a point of interest, or is that not really important? Um, it, it's an it's an interface. Uh, it's another interface. So you have you've you've added one more. So you had surface shoe athlete, and now you have surface shoe orthoses athlete. So it's definitely we should explore. Um, it would be interesting to find if there is much relative, especially rotational movement between a very stiff upper shoe and a very you know uh, compliant shoe upper if there is much rotational traction but to my knowledge it hasn't really been done yet mm -hmm. but interesting thank you any other questions <laughs>